Welcome to part 2 of module 3. Now that you are now familiar with the different types of synovial joints, let us locate the actual joints and identify their general actions and the bones that are forming them. We will begin with the joints present at the appendicular skeleton. In quadrupeds like dog, there is no true joint supporting the thoracic limb to the trunk or axis of the body. Remember, they lack the clavicle or was reduced as interclavicular tendinous intersection of the brachiocephalicus muscle. However, the thoracic limb is attached to the body by a specialized joints formed and supported by strong muscles. That specialized joint is termed as synsarcosis. The first true joint of the thoracic limb is the shoulder joint. This is a good example of a ball and socket joint formed between the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. It is capable of universal motion but mostly flexion and extension. In naming joints, usually the name of the bones articulating are represented. Take note that the first bone being mentioned is the bone that is more proximal to the body. In this case, scapulohumeral joint which means between the scapula and the humerus. Or to be specific, it can be glenohumeral joint or between the glenoid cavity of the scapula and the humerus. The next joint is the elbow joint. It is also known as cubital or more specifically humeroradio ulnar joint. It is typical example of a hinge joint and allows flexion and extension. Carpal joint is composed of several joints. These are the antebrachiocarpal joint or the joint between the antebrachial bones or the radius and ulna with the proximal carpal bone. Among the three joints, this is the most movable. Next is the middle carpal joint. It is a joint between the two rows of the carpal bones. And finally, the carpometacarpal joint or the joint between the distal row of carpal bones and the metacarpal bones. Among the three, this has the least movement. In addition, intercarpal joints are plane joints between individual carpal bones. The joints of the digit is composed of articulations between the metacarpus and bones of the digit as well as articulations between digital bones. The metacarpophalangeal joint is located between the distal end of metacarpal bone and the proximal phalanx. It is a modified hinge joint allowing flexion and extension. In quadrupeds, this is referred to as the fetlock. The proximal interphalangeal joint is located between the proximal and middle phalanx. It is often referred to as the pastern. The distal interphalangeal joint is a joint between the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx. This is the coffin joint. Now we are done with the thoracic limb, let us start locating the joints present at the pelvic limb. In contrast, the hind limb has a true joint attaching the pelvic limb to the actual skeleton. This is possible because of the sacroiliac joint. This is an immobile joint between the wings of the sacrum and the ilium. It is a combined cartilaginous and synovial joint. The pelvic bones are joined together by the pelvic symphysis. This is a fibrocartilaginous joint between the two hip bones. Bones are fused by cartilage in young animal but replaced by bone in adult. The cranial part is called pubic symphysis while the caudal part is called ischiatic symphysis. The hip joint or the coxofemoral joint is a spheroidal joint between the acetabulum of the hip bone and the head of the femur. They are attached via the round ligament of the head of the femur. The stifle joint or the genual or knee joint is a compound joint between the femur, patella, and the tibia. The femoropatellar joint is located between the patella and the trochlea of the femur, while the femorotibial joint is a joint between the femoral condyles and the tibia. Take note that this joint has a meniscus. Interestingly, this joint has ligaments called cruciate ligaments. The cranial cruciate ligament arises from the caudolateral femur and inserts cranially on the tibia. This prevents the cranial movement of the tibia. 
On the other hand, the caudal cruciate ligament arises from the craniomedial femur and inserts caudally on the tibia. It prevents caudal movement of the tibia. The tarsal joint is the hock. It is classified as a compound hinge joint allowing flexion and extension. It is composed of several joints. To begin with, the tibiotarsal joint is located between the tibia and the proximal row of the tarsal bone, which are the talus and the calcaneus. It is followed by the proximal intertarsal joint, located between the proximal tarsal bone and the central tarsal bone. The distal intertarsal joint is located between the central and the tarsal bones 1, 2, and 3, while the tarsometatarsal joint is found between the distal tarsal bone and the metatarsal bone 1 to 5. Finally, the intertarsal joint is a plane joint between the individual tarsal bones. The same with the thoracic limb, the joints of the digits of the pelvic limb is composed of three main joints. The metatarsophalangeal joint is a joint between the distal end of the metatarsal bone and the proximal phalanx. It is a modified hinge joint allowing flexion and extension. This is analogous to the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thoracic limb. The proximal interphalangeal joint is a joint between the proximal and the middle phalanx, while the distal interphalangeal joint is a joint between the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx. After finishing the joints of the appendicular skeleton, let us now discuss the major joints of the axial skeleton. To begin with, temporomandibular joint is a condylar joint between the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and the condyloid process of the mandible. This joint has a meniscus or articular disc. As we recall, the skull is composed of several flat bones. Each bone is fused together by a fibrous joint called sutures. The joints between the vertebra is called intervertebral joint. The intervertebral articulations are composed of two types of joint. First, it is classified as symphysial or cartilaginous. This is between the adjacent vertebral bodies and associated with the intervertebral disc in between two vertebra as shown here. The intervertebral disc is composed of an outer annulus fibrosus and an inner nucleus pulposus. You might recall in your embryology class that the nucleus pulposus is the adult fate of the notochord. Second, the intervertebral joint has a synovial articulation. This is between the caudal and cranial articular processes of adjacent vertebrae. The atlanto-occipital joint is a joint between the atlas and the occipital bone of the skull. It is strictly a hinge joint which performs only flexion and extension. This is the yes joint. On the other hand, the atlanto-axial joint is the joint between the atlas and the axis. The dens of the axis forms a pivot, thus a trochoid joint with the atlas. This is the no joint. And that ends our lecture on arthrology. Take note that we discuss only the common joints of the body. Identifying their location is important, especially when you do your practice in the future. I hope this module at least provide you an insight on the number of joints present in the body. To assess your learning, a short quiz is prepared for this module. After that, you may now start module 4, which is the muscular system.